Hello everybody, this is Group 9, Team Floridians, and our team members are Kevin Russell, myself, uh, Michael Amato, Joe Romano, Katarina Acosta, and Tanea Layton. Uh, our professor is Dr. Steve Diasio, and our this class is Principal of Management, MAN 3025. This is our Finger Puppet TV uh, midterm presentation. Our show is titled Scales of Justice, and uh, we hope you enjoy the show, and we hope you enjoy this uh, presentation we're about to send to you. So the focus of the show, we have four main focuses, and these focuses include to act as a source of entertainment for both in and outside the classroom, to act as an educational tool for current and future students, also to clearly and effectively convey the concepts of management taught as the course material, and one final one, we want to show the collaboration efforts of a fully online group at the University of South Florida. So as uh, I said in the last point here, we have not met as a team in person. Everything that you're seeing, every episode is completely online. Um, so we wanted to definitely make that a forefront uh, point that this project, this class is possible to do online as well. So we have a target audience and format. For the audience, we want to target generally ages 18 and up. Uh, this show is basically one of your, your crime action drama law shows. Um, comparable to SVU, Special Victims Units, and CSI, and shows to those degrees. Um, the show has action, dialogue, um, funny moments as well here and there. Um, and we think it would be a good fit for any fan who loves crime and uh, shows about the law. So we do have a format that each show will generally try to follow. Uh, each show will begin with a quote. This quote will be relatable to the law and also act as a foreshadowing device for our episode. Uh, each episode will demonstrate a managerial topic. So this topic will generally be what we've been learning for the week and we will incorporate that into the episode and center the story around that concept. Uh, finally, we have, uh, in order to make the episode seem seamlessly transition from one to the other, we're going to have uh, pretty much a cliffhanger at the end of each episode, generally like what you would see in crime shows that, that leave the audience wanting more. So that's kind of uh, our format for those episodes. Uh, so the summary of the plot. So this plot is about a legal law firm, Scales of Justice, and its protagonist, which is a newly made lawyer, Nathan Noble. He's just out of law school. He just found his first job, and it's with his mentor uh, and hero, uh, Gerwin Gilt. Um, so throughout the episodes, uh, he meets friends and colleagues, and he learns more about the law and progresses into, the, uh, into being a better lawyer because of this. He also learns about managerial techniques, and he... He incorporates that into what he's learning about the law as well in order to become a better person for it. Um, there are managers that support him in this uh, journey he's undertaking, but there's are those who won't. Uh, much like uh, his hero won't be one of those managers that support him. We find out that Gilt, while he's renowned and revered by his colleagues in the law firm, he actually does have a dark side. Uh, and it leads to him and Noble having a conflict uh, in the final episode because Gilt has been uh, trying to sabotage him and other lawyers at the law firm. We find that out. So uh, before we continue on, I wanted to introduce you to some characters that uh, that are going to be highlighting our show. So the protagonist, we uh, want to start off with him. His name is Nathan Noble. He is the newest member of the Scales of Justice law firm, fresh out of law school. Uh, this is a, a good thing. It means uh, he's a sponge. He's able to learn uh, and take on these techniques, these managerial techniques and these uh, information about the law and get some experience under his belt. But this also poses a problem because he isn't experienced. He also uh, – he – tends to get very nervous in tense situations, uh, which can make for some funny moments uh, and some tense and uh, uh, moments that you, you're rooting for him, but um, he's just, he's trying to, he's stumbling his way through getting to where he needs to be. Uh, so we, next we have Jennifer Justice. Jennifer Justice is a little bit more of a senior member at the Scales of Justice. Uh, she works directly under guilt, so she is comparable to an assistant manager. Uh, Justice uh, is the mentor that will be overshadowing Nathan, uh, directly overshadowing him. Uh, she has a kind heart, she really cares about the law, and she displays very positive managerial techniques. As we'll see throughout the episodes, she'll actually start to step into becoming the manager at Scales of Justice Law Firm when ethical dilemmas prevent the current manager from continuing on. Uh, she has great decision-making skills, strong ethics, and she's great at planning strategies, so very good manager all around. 
We have uh, our records keeper, Stacy Starks. Uh, Stacy Starks is more of a supporting character, but she does uh, display some managerial concepts uh, later on. Uh, generally, I believe around episode three. Uh, she is um, she's basically when you need evidence for the case, she's the one who stores it, so you can easily find it when and it's accessible when it needs to be accessible. She also practices quality managerial techniques and serves to help Noble on his journey into the law. Uh, finally, well not finally, we still have one more character after him, but we have Gerwin Gilt. He is the founder and leader of Scales of Justice, so he's the current manager. He's renowned by his peers, uh, because he's actually not lost a case. He's 399 and 0, uh, so everyone respects him and pretty much idolizes him, including Noble. Uh, but we do find out that Gerwin actually is, uh is actually has a dark side uh and he tri he tries to twist the law and managerial ethics to his to his whim so uh he beats his own drum and this uh, obviously causes problems down the line for members of the scales of justice law firm and aiding him in this is actually our last character william wolf he's actually a detective um that also while seemingly infallible has a uh, some some dark sides of his own uh he's trying to make a name for himself so he actually ends up assisting the scales of justice law firm uh specifically by being hired by guilt so we see that uh he actually helps guilt uh steal evidence plant evidence and other things like that so uh we have two pretty much antagonistic characters here so we have uh, Case 1, which is pretty much how we dub our episodes, a uh, little uh, play for the law. So Case 1 is um, centers around Noble, and he meets Justice for the first time, and this is their first case that they take on. Um, Noble realizes about halfway through the case, uh, when it's his turn to actually go and present evidence and cross-examine the witnesses and, and those things to those likings, he's actually misplaced the crucial piece of evidence that's going to close this case for him. So this obviously makes him tense up and he starts getting really nervous, but Justice comes in and helps him out, and they end up going through the rational decision-making model uh, and finding alternatives and strategies they can implement, and then they finally end up winning the case because they, they took the time to think about it and made the correct decision. So going on to episode two, Objection! we do want to wait though actually, we want to go into the concepts displayed in episode one. So the concepts displayed in episode one, uh, they're focused on the rational decision model that we learn in uh, page 333. Uh, so this model has pretty much seven steps that are, are meant to be followed, and we try to display those in this episode. But these steps, just real quick, include identifying decision situations, develop objectives and criteria, generate alternatives, analyze alternatives, select alternatives, implement decisions, monitor and evaluate the results and pretty much that is the final step that leads them to to seeing that they won the uh, first court case so in this episode we see that they go through alternatives and they make the steps into becoming into winning their first case so going on to episode two uh, episode two continues on uh, in the end of episode one we actually see that a shadowy figure actually is the one who steals the evidence so that's our little cliffhanger that leads into episode two here episode two uh, entitled the shadowy figure is Nathan uh, super excited about his first win uh, is trying to have a good time about it but he can't seem to get that the evidence missing he can't get that out of his head so he goes to his office he looks nothing he goes to uh, guilt's office nothing so he ends up enlisting the help of Stacy Starks, uh, our record keeper. Uh, she actually helps him formulate a plan to uh, check his office again, check Guild's office, check the, the evidence depository, check all these places again, ask questions. Um, when all that turns up, they actually have one final step of their plan, which is to watch the camera footage uh, to see maybe if something happened to it, uh, which leads us to our next cliffhanger for episode two, which is they see Guilt is the one who took the evidence, but he's the manager. Why would he do that? So this goes in episode three, but wait one second. We actually do want to talk about the concepts displayed in episode two because we feel like this is going to be important for future students. We want to learn. We want to show the concepts that we're portraying in the episodes. So uh, episode two, it actually follows uh, planning um, and Stacy Starks and Noble communicating with each other with that plan. So they retrace their steps and find additional information along the way. The type of plan being implemented is a tactical plan. So this is a term from the book. They plan out a process with steps that are short and to the point. The plan is detailed and very specific to what needs to be done to reach their objectives. Finding the missing evidence within their planning process, the two characters analyze key elements such as resources, objectives, implementation, and outcomes. All of these are displayed in this episode. To understand their challenges at hand, Noble and says he had to better allocate their resources to get a better result from their planning process. That's the kind of uh, theme we're going for in episode two. 
So moving on to episode three, uh, the strange and peculiar action of guilt. So episode three takes place right where episode two left off. Uh, Noble is shocked to, to find that pretty much his hero and his, uh, uh, that the reason why he got into the law is doing this. So uh, he has so many questions. Why did guilt remove the evidence? What is the founder of scales of justice? He's crooked some way. Uh, with all these questions going through his head, Noble can only think to look to the core values and unity of command uh, to find the answer on what he should do. He decides to, to go to the lawyer right above him, which our assistant manager pretty much, uh, Jennifer Justice. He tells her what he saw, uh, and Jennifer now is being put in that position where she has an ethical dilemma, which we'll see in the next episode. But this is a critical incident. Uh, Jennifer, uh, faces, Jennifer Justice faces a dilemma and has several uh, questions of her own. The final scene shows Justice trailing guilt to see what he's been up to, which leads us into episode four. Take that! But again, we want to talk about the concepts. We feel like that's an important part of this whole TV series. The concepts displayed in Episode 3, there are several. Uh, episode 3 actually generally focuses on Chapter 6 of the Management Textbook. Um, it's or The chapter focuses on organizational structure and design. Uh, and it has uh, several concepts displayed, like unity of command, going to one boss, uh, organizational structure, and a critical incident, uh, which is... Uh, grounds for immediate termination as Jennifer reflects on her obligations. So all of these concepts are displayed in this episode and people going forward, they can watch this and they can see these generally displayed. So moving on to episode four, we have Tipping the Scales of Justice. Uh, this episode continues again right where episode three left off, most like all episodes will. Uh, Gil is... Uh, Justice finally confronts Gil, uh, and Gil is un unable to think of an excuse and lets out a laugh. Pretty much, he's got that evil laugh. He's our pro he's our antagonist. He explains to Justice that creating a competitive advantage over his competition, even if that competition with his own company is what makes him the best lawyer and will keep him in that position for years to come. So he explains that early failures will lower Noble's confidence and make him easier to control. Justice has a lot of information to process. So it's based on much Gil. We find him stepping into that, that villain role, and uh, in order for him to stay successful, he has to push others down so he can remain at the top of his firm so gotcha! again we want to talk about those concepts displayed in episode four concepts displayed in episode four are uh, around chapter four which you can see find in pages 83 to 85 uh it's guilt admits to justice that he is he is the one who stole the evidence uh noble who he sees as a competition even though he works for guilt as company if guilt is able to su supply critical evidence for his cases and noble is not guilt has a competitive advantage over noble that's the key word here this gives him the ability to provide value to customers that his competition cannot guilt will have a superior value as a lawyer when compared to noble so finally, this takes us to episode five, which is what we have written up to this point. And this title is Doing What's Right. Uh, this is focused on social responsibility and managerial ethics. Uh, episode five, Justice contemplates the dilemma of what to do when uh, about guilt sabotaging Noble's case. On one hand, she believes what guilt did was wrong and that he should be punished for it. On the other hand, calling out her boss could potentially career suicide for her. And she really enjoys her position within the company. She should do what's right, even if that means losing her job. Should she, or does that, or does she ignore what she simply carry on business as usual? This is a difficult dilemma, which ethical decision-making approach justice chooses will determine which course she should take. So this is uh, an episode that it's kind of like a little bit of a filler episode, but it uh, has some uh, unique topics. Eureka! Boom. We want to go one more time into the concepts before we end that episode. So the concepts displayed here are our ethical uh, managerial ethics. So this is chapter two, pages 29 to 33. Uh, we find that Justice uh, is trying to make this decision uh, about ethics. Uh, she could be fired or she could um, suppress the, uh, the information she knows and continue on as usual. This results in what is referenced in the book as an ethical dilemma. This is when two competing but arguably valid options must be chosen from. She can choose to use the ultraritarian approach, which is most likely result in her saying nothing and avoid the risk of losing her job. Or she could also choose to use the moral rights approach, which would likely result in her deciding to disclose the wrongful actions of guilt regardless of the consequences. Uh, finally, we have what's done and what's left to do. Uh, what's done? We have episode one and two rough drafts. Uh, they are filmed and uploaded to YouTube, so you can go ahead and check those out. There are Scales of Justice episode one and two. Uh, one is uh, filmed by me and narrated by me, um, and the other episode is uh, filmed and narrated by Katarina and Tanea. Uh, milestone one and two are complete, and we have full uh, marks for each uh, for each assignment or or in bio. And we do have a couple things left to do. We have milestones three and four, establishing the rest of our episodes and creating a final booklet and presentation for our show. And we finally have our final group evaluations and submissions that we will submit uh, to cap off the class. 
Uh, before we end, I want to do the references. We did reference the book in almost every uh, episode here. Well, pretty much every episode. Uh, and then um, a lot of inspiration for the characters and the uh, concept of the show was uh, from a video game, uh, Capcom's Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So I didn't want to leave them out. Um, I thought that game would be a good um, jumping point to get into managerial topics. Um, that would be the end of our assignment, though. Thank you for watching, and uh, we hope to see you again when you watch our final presentation. Thank you, guys.